Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Fellowship of Worship. We'd like to welcome those who are joining uh, with us from different parts of the world. And uh, it is my prayer that we are all ready to praise Him. We are all ready to give thanks to Him. We are also ready to listen to God's Word to be delivered to us by Pastor Dan Castillo. But before we uh, 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 read God's Word today, let's sing some praise and worship songs. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence You've never failed me yet I know the night won't last But your word will come to pass my heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough Keep me within your love oh, My heart will sing your praise again Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me I 
still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands this is my confidence you've never failed your promise still stands great is your faithfulness your faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed me yet you never failed me yet Good morning um, Let us now join our hearts in prayer As we pray for our church Our families and even our country but let us ask the Holy Spirit to first and foremost search our hearts to check our motives so that we may confess to him any sin that he brings to the forefront of our minds father we ask for forgiveness for anything, Lord, that may have hurt you or we may have said against our, our neighbors, we ask, Lord, that you help us to confess, agree, and repent, Lord, of these sins. We thank you for the blood of Christ that has been shed to pay for all our sins on the cross. Right now, Lord, we, we pray, Father, that you listen to our prayers. And we know, Lord, that you will answer these in your time and in your ways. But right now, Lord, we lift up to your brothers and sisters who are sick, those who are hurting, the wounded soldiers of the kingdom. Father, we pray for Alin Krising and her family. She just lost uh, her husband, uh, Mang Eli, our dear brother. Please embrace this family and let them know, Lord, that you love them and let your peace be upon them to comfort them, Lord, during this time of grieving. And uh, Lord, we are saddened by this news. We will miss him, Lord, but we know he is in the best place already, Lord, at home with you. And we will just wait, Father, for the great reunion, Lord, that we will have one of these days when you come back. But thank you, Lord, for Al Mangeli, his life and his legacy. We also pray, Lord, for uh, Tita Chilet. We pray that you continue, Lord, to watch over her and uh, provide for her, Lord, all her needs. Especially now, Lord, that she needs your divine healing and renewed strength. We pray for Ivy. Uh, thank you, Lord, that uh, she's slowly recovering, Lord, from her injuries. May she continue to hold on to your hand as she slowly gains back her ability to walk again. Let her walk in faith and draw strength from you, Lord. We also lift up to you, uh, Nico, this young man, Lord, who's aff afflicted by cancer. Lord, he will, he is, he will be undergoing chemotherapy, and we pray, Father, that you allow him, Lord, to know you more, 
through this very painful season of his life. And we just pray, Lord, that uh, your healing will be upon our young brother and may he see your purpose for allowing all of this to happen to him. Lord, we pray for Andre. Lord, his upcoming angiogram, Lord, will be this week or weekend. And we pray and thank you for uh, allowing him to go at this far, Lord, in his life, young life, that he has, you have sustained him, you have provided for him and his family, even through the pandemic. And now, Lord, he is so hopeful and prayerful that uh, matutuloy na tong last heart surgery. Lord, we pray for your provisions for this family. And sana even PGH will uh, grant them a, a favorable uh, discount or uh, ways, Lord, that it will lessen the expenses for this procedure. And may you also grant uh, all the provisions that they will need. Father, we pray for our elderly. Salamat, Lord, for the good news that Doc Jim is cancer-free. We rejoice with his family. And he wants, Lord, uh, ang pangarap lang ni Doc Jim is for him, even at his age, to be an instrument uh, to reach out to his community and his neighbors to spread the good news of the gospel. And we pray that you will grant him this prayer. We also pray for Sister Becky. Uh, we pray for Shawnee and Toti. We pray, Lord, for Tita Chilet, Nana Yerlinda, Aling Krising, Daddy Bear, Celso, and Alma, whom we haven't seen for some time already. We pray for Tita Juliet, na nananakit daw po ang legs and hips. We pray for Tita Irma. Lord, may you be the one to sustain them with healthy years as you provide for all their needs. And Lord, we also pray for our children. We pray for our children who have grown two years older since this pandemic started. May they see and know you as they're the same God who delivered your people from the famines, wars, and enemies, and calamities in the past. But you are the same God who will deliver us from our present situations. Lord, we pray also for the for traveling mercies, for uh, the sampans, for the safe trip of Je uh, in the next few days, uh, this week. And ang pagdating din po nila, Pastor Lito, Sister Tess, and Johanna. Uh, we pray, Lord, that everything will follow smoothly and that you will bring them here safely. We miss them and uh, we can't wait for the stories they will tell when they come back. Pinapanalangin din po namin si Pastor Boji, who is now in Marinduque. Keep him safe and uh, as his family joins him in the ministry there, may you allow them a uh, good time to bond together as well as, as they work and minister to the people of Marinduque. And uh, Lord, we're excited that one day we will be able to meet each one again, Lord, in person, in the flesh, to worship you. But uh, may you open that door and we will be glad, Lord, to enter it, Lord. Make it soon, Lord. Uh, we also pray for our servant leaders and pastors. Lord, may you teach us your ways, your wisdom and discernment. May you also raise up more men who will serve you. May you also ingrain in our hearts to love, to shepherd, to instruct, to walk alongside, and to minister to the needs of your church, your bride. It is such a task, Lord, but it is an honor and a blessing. May you find us faithful, O Lord, until you come.
Lord, we're also praying for our brothers in Ictus and the other churches here and abroad. That during this end nearing times, Lord, we will all don the full armor of God and stand firm against the true enemy, Satan. As we fight not flesh and blood, but powers and principalities who use and manipulate lost and world events to discourage the believers and stay in the name of your Son. Help us, Lord, to stand firm during these times. And Lord, you know that our desire, Lord, for our country, we have longed for a, a godly leader who will rule us with integrity and a clean government. It has eluded us for many years now. Lord, may we ask that you, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, install us a servant leader who will love the people, your people, who will be wise and who will be God-fearing. The one who will eradicate corruption, who will mend our fractured people and society and economy. Please give us a clean and honest election this coming May, as we all do our part in voting. Have mercy on our beloved country, Lord we will just trust you. Lastly, Lord, have mercy on the innocent Ukrainians and Russians caught in the crossfires. We know all these conflicts and wars are taking place like child birth pangs, Lord. And that's why we will only trust and focus our eyes on you. Jesus, the Prince of Peace, our only hope. In whose name we pray all of this. Amen. Lord, speak to our hearts now as we listen to your message. Good morning, everyone. I'll raise a hallelujah. of my enemies I'll raise a hallelujah louder than beyond belief I'll raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I'll raise Hallelujah, heaven comes to fight for me. I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar.
sing a little louder, 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 sing a little louder. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Good morning once again, brothers and sisters in the Lord. We will continue our study about God's attributes and I'd like us to go to the book of Esther today to behold that God is truly good. There are two reasons I chose our study today from this book. First, I'd like us to pick up from where I left off, where we talked about God's overall plan or sovereignty last month, even if the Jews would be sent off in exile for 70 years in Babylon. This was prophesied by Jeremiah. Now, here in Esther, Babylon's reign as the world power ended. You see, God had to deal with the Babylonians too for harming Israel, or Judah for that matter. Remember in Daniel chapter 5, when King Belshazzar used the temple utensils for their drinking spree. Then there was a hand that wrote on the wall. Sa Filipino version, it read, Tinimbang ka, ngunit kulang. That night, the Medes and the Persians occupied Babylon and became the new world powers. Kahanga-hanga nga yung military strategy nila wherein uh, they rerouted the river, and then doon sila dumaan para mabilis silang makapasok. Walang kaabog-abog, they were able to reach Babylon. So, in our study today, the setting shifts to Persia. But just to put things into perspective, I wrote a chart, I drew a chart, para makita natin 
how our study today fits in the scheme of things. Noong 626 BC, Jeremiah and actually other prophets with him who were still in Judah at that time, they prophesied Israel's exile in Babylon. So, dinala sila si Babylon in 605 BC. By the way, remember, yung taon po nung mga panahon na yon ay pabalik, paatras, papunta sa 1. So, as we move on, pababa ng pababa yung number. Nung 539 BC, this was 66 years after Daniel and company were brought to Babylon. At nung nagkaroon ng uh, writing on the wall, ang, nag, ang naging leader na ng buong mundo at that time ay si Darius or uh, he's popularly known as Cyrus. Uh, again, this was when Babylon was defeated by the Medo-Persians. Medo Nagsanib persa po yung mga Medes and Persians uh, at tinalo nila ang Babylon na world power at that time. Nung pumalit itong si Darius, ito na yung nangyari kay Daniel na he was thrown in the lion's den. By 538 BC, ang grupo sa, ng Israelites sa pangungunan ni Zerubbabel went back to Jerusalem. He was with about 50,000 Jews at that time. Now, ito yung panahon na bagong dating o bagong uh, simula yung reign ng Medo-Persians. By 478 BC, ito na yung panahon ni Esther, ay 60 years na yung lumipas since the first batch of those who went back to Israel happened. Ang leader na rito, o ang hari na rito ay si Xerxes, that's his Greek name, uh, ang equivalent name, name niyan ay Ahasuerus pagdating sa Hebrew. So, do not be confused. Mapapansin niyo, I wrote a number on this. Yung number one, si Darius or Cyrus, he was the first king of the Medo-Persian uh, uh, rule or reign. Si Xerxes o si Ahasuerus ay panglima na. Ibig sabihin, at this point, there were already four kings that uh, took over Ngayon ang tanong, the question is, why did many Jews decided to stay dito sa Persia? At this point, the temple was also rebuilt already 33 years prior. Yung susunod naman na scenario, si Artaxerxes, he is the sixth king nitong Medo-Persians, yung by 458 BC sa pangunguna naman ni Ezra, Makikita natin to sa Ezra chapter 7 to 10, yung second batch ng Israelites returned to Jerusalem. Kasama niya ay around 5,000 Jews. This was already 80 years after the first return or the first batch. Noong 20th year ni uh, Artaxerxes, ito yung 444 BC, makikita natin ang account na ito sa Nehemiah naman, ay bumalik na yung last batch ng Israelites sa Jerusalem or 94 years after the first batch. You see, when the Lord told the prophets that Jerusalem or that Israel will be uh, exiled in Babylon for 70 years, ang sabi niya, ibabalik niya. Pero why is it that lumipas na yung 70 years and then another 94 years ang lumipas, ibig sabihin more than double na, pero nandun pa rin yung ibang hudyo sa foreign land. Dapat bumalik na sila. So the question is, why did they not return? Or bakit kaya hindi nila inibig na bumalik? Many times, uh, people get used to leaving, no? where they are, kahit na parusa yun ng Panginoon. Kaya nga, kailangan nating paalalahanan ng bawat isa sa atin regularly, the world is not our home. They have to get back, kasi sabi sa, sa mga prophecies, like in Isaiah chapter 48, verse 20, Leave Babylon, 
flee from the Babylonians. Announce this with shouts of joy and proclaim it. Send it out to the ends of the earth. Say, the Lord has redeemed his servant Jacob. Si Jacob ay yung Israel. So Jeremiah 51.6 naman ang sabi, Flee from Babylon. Run for your lives. Do not be destroyed because of her sins. It is time for the Lord's vengeance. He will repay her what she deserves. So, nakatakda rin talaga na parusahan ng Panginoon ang Babylon. Now, balikan natin yung naging uh, pag-aaral natin last month. Jeremiah 29, 10 and 11. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. At ano na yung verse na yun? For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Pangalawang dahilan kung bakit ko pinili ito ay in some ways we could relate with the Jews of this time. Bakit? Kasi nung nakabalik na yung ibang Jews, those who remain were about to experience a major catastrophe. That of being wiped out in the land of this new superpower. So parang pareho sa atin ngayon. Why? Because two years na po na na-experience natin yung negative effects ng pandemic which claimed the lives of more than 6 million people around the world and almost 60,000 na po dito sa Pilipinas. An interesting feature of this book is this. God's name was never mentioned. Na para bang sinasabi sa atin, during the difficult times, nitong mga Israelites, ay God's presence was severely missed. Para bang yung kantang footprints in the sand, kung naalala nyo pa yun. Now, pwede kaya na ganito rin yung nararamdaman ng marami nating kababayan ngayon, na it may seem to many that God had abandoned them during this time of hardship. But the good news is this, as we shall see, even if we feel that He is distant during difficult circumstances, God is still good. He is still good. So I'd like to entitle our study today, Be Appreciative of God's Infinite Goodness Amidst His Seeming Absence. Be Appreciative of God's Infinite Goodness Amidst his seeming absence. Manalangin po muna tayo. Dakilang Diyos, tinatagubilin po namin ang pag-aaral na ito. May you just be with us. Give us wisdom, O God. Open our hearts. Open our minds. And help us, O God, to apply whatever truths we will learn today. For we are praying these things in Jesus' name. Amen. By the way, yung setting ng ating pag-aaral ngayon ay sa Susa. Very memorable ito. Dahil ilang events yung nag-transpire na rito o magta-transpire dito uh, sa Daniel, Daniel chapter 8, yung prophetic visions ni Daniel, dito niya nakita sa Susa. Uh, that was 551 BC. Noong 478, yung pinag-uusapan natin ngayon, uh, yung paghirang kay Esther na bilang queen. Ito pala yung tinitirahan ng hari, by the way, uh, during winter. At noong 444 BC, Si Nehemiah naman, dito siya humingi ng permiso kay Artaxerxes na babalik siya sa Jerusalem upang i-rebuild yung walls. So very crucial itong susa. Now, uh, how does God show us that He is good? Paano niya na ipapakita sa atin na mabuti siyang Diyos? God shows us that He is good by letting us experience itong tatlong bagay na titignan natin ngayon. Number one, his gracious presence in spite of our possible disobedience. His gracious presence in spite of our possible disobedience. Pag sinabi kong gracious presence, ibig sabihin undeserved ito. Hindi tayo karapat dapat na makatanggap ng blessing ni Lord. By the way, magsisurvey po ako. Sino sa atin, who among us, have received something that we truly did not deserve? Uh, who among us received something from God that we 
did not deserve. Of course, all of us. Uh, all of us are recipients of God's grace. Bakit natin sinabi na gracious presence in spite of our possible disobedience? Katulad nung nilay down ko kanina, I mentioned at length na dapat babalik na sila yung Israelites doon sa Jerusalem but they chose to stay for one reason or another. Kaya maraming commentators uh, ang nakita ko na nagsabi, they are actually disobeying the command of God. Pero I'm not sure about it, kaya ginamit ko yung term na possible. So, the gracious presence o regalo ng Diyos sa mga Israelites, even if there was a possible disobedience. Ano ang background nitong pinag-uusapan natin? Uh, when King Xerxes, nung nagsa-celebrate sila, nag manch, he asked Queen Vashti, yung kanyang asawa, to display her beauty among his guests. Now, hindi natin alam kung yung beauty na yun ay yung kanyang facial beauty lang ba o yung kanyang buong pangangatawan. Tinanggihan niya ito. She disobeyed the king. So, the king decided to look for a new one. Dito pumapasok si Esther sa story natin sa Esther chapter 2 verses 5 to 7 and then we'll jump to verse 17. Let me read it for you. Now, there was in the citadel of Susa a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin named Mordecai, son of Jair, the son of Shimei, the son of Kish, who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Among those taken captive with Jehoiachin, king of Judah, Mordecai had a cousin named Hadassah, whom he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. This young woman, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Mordecai had taken her as his own daughter when her father and mother died. Now, the king was attracted to Esther more than to any of the other women, and she won his favor and approval more than any of the other virgins. So, he set a royal crown on her head and made, made her queen instead of Vashti. So may kita natin yung background. Maliwanag dito, galing sila sa Israel, dinala sila sa Babylon nung nasakop ni Nebuchadnezzar ang, ang Israel. And now, they stay there so long. In fact, alam nyo, dun sa dating nito, mukhang nung nagbali ka na yung first batch, ay hindi pa nga pinapanganak si Esther noon. Pero pinanganak siya, and then nagtagal pa rin sila doon, namatay na yung mga magulang niya, and Mordecai became her guardian. Again, sabi ko nga, pinili si Esther na maging reyna despite her disobedience to return to Jerusalem. The Lord's favor is very evident in a foreign land. Meron akong binabasang verse ng isang araw sa Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 16. Sabi rito, This is what the Lord says, Although I sent them far away among the nations and scattered them among the countries, yet for a little while I have been a sanctuary for them in the countries where they have gone. Kahit sa andalhin ang mga Israelites, nandudun pa rin si Lord. In fact, towards the end of the book of Esther, makikita pa rin natin si Mordecai being assigned by the king as the second highest official of the land, again, kahit na hindi sila bumalik sa Israel. So, yan yung una. Yung pangalawa na makikita natin yung goodness ng Panginoon is through the glowing praises instead of potential defeat. Through glowing praises instead of potential defeat. Ano yung background nito? Pagkatapos makoronahan ni Esther, itong si Mordecai ay na-expose niya sa hari yung plot na patayin siya. But he does not receive any, war any reward from this. On the other hand, merong inassign yung hari na highest official si Haman and he asked everyone to bow down to him pero hindi ito ginagawa ni Mordecai. So Haman planned to execute Mordecai. But one night, the king remembers his heroic act 
and ask Haman how should he honor a special person. Ito yung nangyari. What a turn of events uh, sa chapter 5 and chapter 6 ito. Starting from verse 9 ng chapter 5. Haman went out that day happy and in high spirits. But when he saw Mordecai at the king's gate and observed that he neither rose nor showed fear in his presence, he was filled with rage against Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. Calling together his friends and Zeresh, his wife, Haman boasted to them about his vast wealth, his many sons, and all the ways the king had honored him and how he had elevated him above the other nobles and officials. And that's not all, Haman added. I'm the only person Queen Esther invited to, to accompany the king to the banquet she gave. And she has invited me along with the king tomorrow. But all this gives me no satisfaction as long as I see that Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. Verse 14. His wife, Zeresh, and all his friends said to him, Have a pole set up, reaching to a height of 50 cubits, that's about 75 feet tall, and ask the king in the morning to have Morde Mordecai impaled on it. Alam niyo ba yung ibig sabihin ng impale? Yung pole na yun, itutusok si Mordecai doon. Tutuhugin siya doon. Then go with the king to the banquet and enjoy yourself. This suggestion delighted Haman. And he had the pole set up. Bakit ko sinabing potential defeat? Mordecai would suffer probably the worst defeat he could experience and that is death. Kaya lang ginamit ko yung term na defeat rather than death kasi I feel na mas makakarelate tayo dun sa mga defeats na hinaharap natin kaysa dun sa potential death na haharapin natin. Ito yung turn of events sa chapter 6. That night, the king, could, the king could not sleep. So he ordered the book of the Chronicles, the record of his reign, to be brought in and read to him. It was found recorded there that Mordecai had exposed Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway, who had conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. What honor and recognition has Mordecai received from for this, the king asked. Nothing has been done for him, his attendants answered. The king said, who is in the court? Pansinin ito. Now, Haman had just entered the outer court of the palace to speak to the king about impaling Mordecai on the pole he had set up for him. His attendants, verse 5, answered, Haman is standing in the court. Bring him in, the king ordered. When Haman entered, the king asked him, What should be done for the man the king delights to honor? Now Haman thought to himself, Who is there that the king would rather honor than me? So he answered the king, For the man the king delights to honor, Have them bring a royal robe the king has worn and a horse the king has ridden. One with a royal crest placed on its head. Verse 9. Then let the robe and horse be entrusted to one of the king's most noble princes. Let them robe the man the king delights to honor and lead him on the horse through the city streets, proclaiming before him, This is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. He was thinking na siya yun. Verse 10. Go at once, the king commanded Haman. Get the robe and the horse and do just as you have suggested for Mordecai the Jew who sits at the king's gate. Do not neglect anything you have recommended. Nag-fire nag back sa kanya. Verse 11, So Haman got the robe and the horse. He rode Mordecai and led him on horseback through the city streets proclaiming before him this is what is done for the man the king delights to honor. Afterward, Mordecai returned to the king's gate, but Haman rushed home with his head covered in grief and told Zeresh, his wife, and all his friends everything that had happened to him. 
Uh, imbis na potential defeat, very possible defeat yung haharapin ni Mordecai, ang nangyari, there was glowing glowing pr uh, praise. Saan ba tayo makakita na ganun uh, i-honor ng hari, i-ikot, no? nasuot-suot yung robe ng hari, nakasakay sa kabayo ng hari. Now, let me ask you, who among us are spotless? Yung walang kasalanan. Uh, All of us have sins. Pero, even with that, we still experience recognition time and again. Di ba? No, itong si Mordecai, itong si Queen Esther, they did not obey the Lord. Pero, nakatanggap pa rin si Mordecai ng glowing praises from the king. Nangyayari rin sa atin yan. No, na tayo ay pinapangaralan kahit na marami tayong nagawang kasalanan or there are times imbis na defeat yung ating maramdaman ay nabibigyan pa tayo ng parangal. I remember one time, this is a personal story. I had some workmates uh, who wanted to discredit me uh, from a ministry partner. When uh, I was uh, talking with these ministry partners, I felt ashamed. And probably defeated for a couple of minutes. Then the ministry partner told me after hearing the the news about me, he asked me, uh, "We can." Uh, he told me we can't do anything about it already. But here's what I'll do: I'll give you and your wife round trip tickets to Cebu. Wow, I felt vindication there at that time. People were were trying to discredit me. But this ministry partner believed on me and even gifted me with a vacation. Ganito rin yung nangyari kay Joseph. Remember when he said about his brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. So Genesis chapter 50 and verse 20. Yung pangatlong paraan kung paano pinapakita ni Lord that He is good to us or good to the Israelites ay when he guaranteed protection in response to perilous disasters. He guaranteed protection in response to perilous disasters. Anong ibig kong sabihin dito sa perilous disaster? Uh, Haman wanted to kill not only Mordecai, but actually every Jew. Mamaya titignan natin yan. Pero ang tawag dito ay anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is defined as hostility toward or discrimination against Jews as a religious or ethnic or racial group. Tingnan natin, balikan ko yung chapter 3. After these events, King Xerxes honored Haman, the Agagite, elevating him and giving him a seat of honor higher than that of all the other nobles. So, nung una, si Haman yung pinarangalan. All the royal officials at the king's gate knelt down and paid honor to Haman, for the king had commanded this concerning him. But Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor. Verse 5, When Haman saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay, or pay him honor, he was enraged. Yet having learned who Mordecai's people were, he scorned the idea of killing only Mordecai. Instead, Haman looked for a way To destroy all Mordecai's people, the Jews, throughout the whole kingdom of Xerxes. So ito po yung hinaharap na disaster ng Israelites. Yung papatay na silang lahat. Hindi lang si Mordecai, pero bawat isa sa kanila. Ba, paano nila napili yung date na yon sa so, verse 7, sabi rito, In the twelfth year of King Xerxes, in the first month, the month of Nisan, the poor, that is the lot, was cast in the presence of Haman to select a day and a month, and a lot fell on the twelfth month, the month of Adar. Ang nangyari pala ay parang nag-casting lots. Ang tawag nun sa casting lots ay poor at... Uh, Mamaya, i-describe natin kung ano ang significance nito. Verse 8, Then Haman said to King Xerxes, There is a certain people dispersed among the peoples in all the provinces of your kingdom 
who keep themselves separate. Their customs are different from those of all other people and they do not obey the king's laws. It is not in the king's best interest to tolerate them. If it pleases the king, let a decree be issued to destroy them, and I will give 10,000 talents of silver to the king's administrators for the royal treasury. So the king took his signet ring from his finger and gave it to Haman, son of uh, Hamadetha, the Agagite, the enemy of the Jews. Keep the money, the king said to Haman, and do with the people as you please. Hindi pa niya kilala kung sino to. Verse 12, then on the 13th day of the first month, the royal secretaries were summoned. They wrote out in the script of each province and in the language of each people all Haman's orders to the king's satraps, the governors of the various provinces, and the nobles of the various peoples. These were written in the name of King Xerxes himself and sealed with his own ring. Dispatches were sent by couriers to all the king's provinces with the order to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jews, young and old, women and children, on a single day. The thirteenth day of the twelfth month, Yunapagasunduan, the month of Adar, and to plunder their goods. A copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality so they would be ready for that day. The couriers went out, spurred on by the king's command, and the edict was issued in the citadel of Susa. The king and Haman sat down to drink, but the city of Susa was bewildered. Katulad ng nasabi natin kanina, dito po sa book of Esther, there's no mention of God's name. Kahit nga yung word na prayer, hindi binanggit. But here, we'll see that Mordecai asks Queen Esther to ask favor from the king. Ito yung very uh, popular phrase na naririnig din natin sa chapter 7. Do not think, sabi ni Mordecai kay Esther, do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows, but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. On the other hand, ni request naman ni Esther that the Jews would pray for her. Then, Esther talked to the king to invite Haman to a banquet with him. Twice po yan. There, Esther revealed Haman's evil plan. I'll cut the story short. Since the Persian king could not take back his earlier edict, hindi niya pwedeng bawiin yung una na niyang na sabi. He now has to overrule it by empowering the Jews to defend themselves from any oppressor. Tingnan natin yung verse 8. Verse 3, Esther again pleaded with the king, falling at his feet and weeping. She begged him to put an end to the evil plan of Haman, the Agagite. By the, by the way, pinatay na si, uh, si Haman at this time, siya yung nilagay sa Paul which he had devised against the Jews. If it pleases the king, she said, let an order be written overruling the dispatches that Haman devised and wrote to destroy the Jews in all the king's provinces. For how can I bear to see disaster fall on my people? How can I bear to see destruction of my family? Verse 7, King Xerxes replied to Queen Esther and to Mordecai the Jew, because Haman attacked the Jews I have given his estate to Esther, and they have impaled him on the pole he set up. Now, write another decree in the king's name in behalf of the Jews as seems best to you, and seal it with the king's signet ring, for no document written in the king's name and sealed with his ring can be revoked. Hindi kasi pwedeng paltan-paltan yung ruling nila. So, it has to be overruled. Verse 11, the king's edict granted the Jews in every city the right to assemble and protect themselves, to destroy, kill, and annihilate the armed men of any nationality or province who might attack them and their women and their children, and to plunder the property of their enemies. The day appointed for the Jews to do this in all the provinces of King Xerxes 
was the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar. Ito rin yung month na pinili ni Haman para i-annihilate sila. A copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every province and made known to the people of every nationality so that the Jews would be ready on that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. Verse 17, In every province and in every city to which the edict of the king came, there was joy and gladness among the Jews, with feasting and celebrating. And many people of other nationalities became Jews because fear of the Jews has seized them. Guaranteed protection in response to perilous disasters. Ito po yung ginagawa ng Panginoon para maipakita that He is good. Sabi ko kanina, dito po nagsimula yung celebration ng Israelites, yung uh, Feast of the Purim or Feast of the Lots. Uh, hindi po ito part ng mga feast na inutos ng Diyos sa Israelites dun sa books of Moses. Pero ito po ay sineselebrate uh, ng Israelites as a national holiday. In fact, nitong 2022, last week lang po, noong March 16 to 17, ay sinelebrate nila itong Feast of the Lots or Feast of the Purings. Again, God's name is not there. He seems to be absent. He seems to be nowhere. No, nung uh, maraming mga testings, maraming trials yung hinaharap ng Israel. But He showed His goodness by His protection to the Israelites. Mabait po ang ating Panginoon. He is good. Last week po, I went, uh, for the first time in a long while, after two years, I went to a church uh, for a face-to-face -face, uh, speaking engagement, in-person speaking engagement. And on our way to the site, to the place, I, we almost had a terrible disaster. Uh, I took a left turn, green kasi yung left turn, so I took a left turn, dere derecho ko, and then out of nowhere, merong motorcycle na biglang sumulpot sa harapan ko. Napasigaw yung wife ko, I had to hit the brake hard. Salamat sa Panginoon, hindi ko tinamaan yung tricycle or yung motorcycle. If I had hit him, uh, of course, magkakaabirya kami, titigil kami doon, uh, pwede siyang ma-injure. May istak ako doon, hindi ako matutuloy doon sa aking pag-iispikan. Marami sanang naging aberya. But praise the Lord. He rescued us. He protected us from a possible disaster. God kept us safe. I-review ko lang po ulit yung ating points. God is good by letting, letting us experience one, His gracious presence in spite of our possible disobedience. Mga undeserved po ito na regalo ng Diyos. Number two, His glowing praises or glowing praises instead of potential defeat. Binibigyan pa rin tayo ng recognition, na kinikilala pa rin tayo, napupuri pa rin tayo, kahit na ang karapat dapat sa atin talaga parusahan. And then, uh, number three, guaranteed protection in response to perilous disasters. Makikita natin ang kabutihan ng Panginoon during the times na pinoproteksyonin niya tayo. And para po sa bawat isa sa atin na nakikinig ngayon, I'm very sure God has protected each one of us from COVID-19. Kaya naman buhay pa po tayo ngayon. Hindi po ba mabuti ang Panginoon? I remember one hymn. I just would, would like to read this for you. Uh, parang ito yung naging response sa akin while I was studying this story or as, as I was studying this sermon. Sabi ng him, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be, how marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. In application po, 
in your free time today. I hope you look back and recall how God has given you favor even if you are not as obedient to Him. Lahat naman tayo po, anak. And appreciate His goodness. Pasalamatan natin ang goodness ng ating Panginoon. Number two, let's confess to God for not being constantly grateful for His infinite goodness to us. Maraming beses, dumarating ito, pinoprotection niya na tayo, binibigyan niya tayo ng rewards na hindi naman natin uh, deserve, hindi naman tayo karapat dapat tumanggap. Pero, parang hindi natin siya napapasalamatan. Let's take time to confess that to the Lord. Number three, let's testify to someone. Uh, or probably through our social media accounts, how God has been good to us lately. Either by using our stories, katulad ng ginawa ko kanina, or a Bible verse that is close to your heart. Lastly, I hope you take some time this week to go over our lesson and absorb more of it or bask in God's goodness, His infinite goodness in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we thank you because you are good. The Israelites experienced this during the time of Esther. We experience it during this time of pandemic. Even though it may seem that you are not here with us, even if it may seem that you are absent many times in our lives, but the truth remains. You are good and for that we thank you. We give to you all the glory and honor, and we are praying this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. It's time for our worship and giving. Our reading is from uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9 to 10. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Let us pray. Father, thank you for your generosity. Thank you that you, have, you can satisfy our every desire and need. Everything that we have is a gift from you. Your word says that we should give honor to you with the first fruits of our wealth. So please accept our offerings as a gift of worship to you. As we bring our offerings to you, we give back to you from the abundant blessings you have given us. Thank you. You give us the gift of an abundant and eternal life. Lord, bless us and keep us. Make your face shine upon us. Turn your face towards us and give us peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Dan, uh, for sharing to us God's Word. Indeed, uh, God is always present, even if we think He's not around. Even if we think we are in the we are in the middle of circumstances that seems to be uh, difficult, God is always present with us. And bago po tayo magwakas, na ko lang pong ipaalala, uh, ito na po ang huling Sunday ng buwan ng Marso and uh, comes April, we are praying na nawa po magkaroon na po ng in-person na uh, gathering tayo and uh, the elders of the church are preparing for this. So, uh, standby lang po tayo sa ilang mga palala. And always remember, mga kapatid, the love of the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is always with us. See you next Sunday. God bless you.